Self-employed borrowers are getting terrible advice from real estate agents and loan officers that's costing them thousands of dollars when qualifying for a home loan. And I have a simple solution that will solve all their problems. Hey all, I am Keith Collins, a mortgage lender in Nashville that's passionate about helping people finance real estate smart. And today we're going to talk about an interesting strategy to save self-employed borrowers thousands of dollars when qualifying for a home loan. Typically, self-employed borrowers write off a ton. That's a write-off. That's not a write-off. A write-off is a business expense used to reduce your taxable income. Okay, well then why isn't it called a tax write-off? It is! Which means you don't pay a lot of income tax, but it also means you don't claim a lot of income. And when it comes down to loan time, qualifying for a home loan, you don't show the income that you actually make. And the advice that they're typically given is next year when you file your taxes, you need to claim more income. When you claim more income, you'll qualify for the home that you want. The problem is you're also going to pay more income tax. There's a, actually a really cool loan program that allows the lender to look at the business income, not the actual tax returns to get a borrower qualified. We're going to dive into that today. Some of you may be thinking a bank statement loan actually has a higher interest rate and that's why I don't want to go down that path. I want to change your perspective on this. So let's just say you're a self-employed borrower and you're told to claim an extra $100,000 in income to qualify for the home that you want. Let's say you're going to pay 25% in income taxes, that's an additional $25,000 in additional taxes that you're going to pay to try to qualify the traditional route and save on the interest. But that's $25,000 in taxes to save some interest. So check this out. On a bank statement loan, let's say we're looking for an $800,000 home, a traditional verified income route, maybe you have a 6.5% interest rate. And on a bank statement loan, we have a 7% interest rate. There is a payment difference of about $186. And that's what most people are pointing to. They're saying, hey, on this bank statement loan, I'm going to pay more money on a monthly basis. Why wouldn't I just raise my income and pay more income tax and qualify for the cheaper rate? Well, here's what I'm talking about. If we look at this graph here, which shows savings over 60 months, yes, you're going to save about $1,400 in the first five years by going non-bank statement. But in my previous scenario, what if you pay an additional $25,000 in income taxes to do it? You're not saving any money. So the bank statement loan is probably the preferred route so that you don't have to claim the additional income. So let's dive into what a bank statement loan is. On a bank statement loan, we actually look at the deposits going into the business bank accounts as verified income to qualify. Most lenders are going to look at 12 to 24 months. So instead of looking at your income taxes, we're actually going to not provide those at all. Like the income taxes are, are completely removed from the file and we're going to grab 12 to 24 months of business bank statements, all pages, and then we're truly just going to calculate the deposits into the business bank account. And that is going to be our qualified income. It's actually pretty simple. It does take typically 24 to 72 hours to get that qualified because the investor is going to look at the bank bank statements, but that is the simple solution. Bank statement loans are typically only for self-employed borrowers. Now, if there is a W-2 component to your income, that's okay. We can typically bring that in, but the majority of the income being received does need to come from the business. Now, if your spouse is W-2, we can bring in your spouse's income and then potentially just use your bank statement income off your business. Everybody's got a different scenario and we have to dive into it as a lender, but those are the things that we would be looking at. Why wouldn't you do a bank statement loan? Well, a couple of things we've discussed already. In a bank statement loan, you're typically going to have a slightly higher interest rate. So that interest rate is going to be maybe a half a percent higher than what you would get in traditional verification process. We're also going to require a little bit more down payment. So typically a bank statement loan is going to be at least 10% down and your sweet spot is going to be 20%. So if you don't have that kind of money, then maybe you got to go to the traditional verified income route, claim more income and qualify the traditional way to put less down. But a bank statement loan is always going to want a little bit more money for the down payment. Hey all, my goal with this channel is to teach you how to finance real estate smart. And if that is something that you're interested in, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you get to see more content like this. They do have limited availability, so not every lender has access to a bank statement loan. So if you're talking with a lender and they're not offering this, maybe ask them if they have that product. And if they don't have that product, you may have to go talk to a different bank because again, it's limited access. Brokers are great resources and then retail mortgage banking operations that have this product available are the typically the places you want to go. The big banks, right? The Bank of America's, the Wells Fargo's, not to pick on them, the truest banks, they typically don't have bank statement products because they're kind of stuck inside their box. And then business history requirement. So if you just started your business, you're typically not going to be able to qualify for a bank statement loan, but you're also probably not going to be able to qualify for a verified income statement loan as well, because you're typically going to need a two year history of being self-employed to do this because we've got to see the stability in the business. Minimum credit score requirements. So as with all loan programs, as your credit score comes down, the interest rate, 
adversely goes up. And, and that is the same with these. Ideally, the credit score is plus 700, but we can do this for people who are in the mid 600s. But once you get into the low 600s, it's probably gonna present a problem or the interest rate's just gonna be too high to make the bank statement loan make sense with the lower credit scores. Bank statements. This is the part that is unfun. You know, in a, in a regular mortgage loan, we're after to get all your tax returns. In a bank statement loan, we gotta get all your bank statements. Uh, we were working with a client the last month and they had three different business bank statements that we had to get and we had to get all pages for the last 12 months. That's a lot of documentation that we're asking for. We understand that we're asking for all of that, but the bank statements are only what we're using to figure out if you can actually qualify. See, lending still requires us to prove that you have the ability to pay the debt. This program allows us to use your bank statements for that proof. So just be ready to provide all pages, all bank statements on any bank account that the business is actually using. So with a bank statement mortgage, I mean, you can do a $200,000 loan, you can do a $3 million loan. So these programs are available in lower purchase prices and also on jumbo home loans. And there isn't much of an interest rate variance between the two of them. So don't think that this is just for one or just for the other. You can also do it on a second home or an investment property, and you can actually do it on a cash out refinance. I don't know why someone might do it on a rate and term refinance because the interest rate's a little bit higher, but this is a loan that can be used not just for a purchase, but can be done for refinance. It can be used to uh, acquire other properties as well. So how do you find out if you can qualify for a bank statement loan? It's going to be the same way as a traditional loan application process. You're going to get with a lender like myself, and we're going to do the full loan application, take a peek at credit and gather up all the required documentation. It's just the difference here is we're not going to do the tax returns or W-2s or paycheck stubs. We're just going to get your bank statements. So if you're actually thinking about this, or maybe you were denied by another lender and you want to go the bank statement route, start gathering up all those bank statements, get them in PDF copies so that they can be securely uploaded to the lender. You're going to complete the application and then we're going to have to have the bank statements reviewed. So a lot of these programs have an actual investor behind them and they also need to calculate the income. And that can be a three or four day process. So we're going to do the application, let you know what we think, but then we're going to gather up all those bank statements, send it to our investor, and then they're actually going to calculate the income. They're going to let us know what income we can use based on the deposits coming in to the business bank accounts. Once we have that, you're going to be pre-approved and you're happy house hunting. These loans can be closed in less than 30 days. It's a very traditional loan process once we've gathered up the bank statements to figure out what you can qualify for. So let's tie this up in a bow. You're self-employed and you're writing everything off, which is what the IRS allows you to do, but you've been told you don't qualify because you're not claiming enough income, even though the business is generating a lot of revenue. A bank statement loan program might be the avenue to get you qualified for the house that you want. You need to be prepared to provide additional documentation. You also need to be prepared for a slightly higher interest rate. But I do believe that that higher interest rate will definitely be offset by any additional income tax that you're going to pay to qualify for the traditional loan program. I love helping self-employed borrowers and I love helping people find ways to not have to pay so much money to the IRS. So I'm super grateful that you tuned into this. If you're looking for more information about the real estate market or buying a home, check out our most recent video on why I believe we're on the doorsteps of one of the largest buyer surges our country's ever seen.